بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to lessons in fiqh uh, we're still studying the times of salat times of prayer last time we did not have time so for another time brother Fadi will read us hadith number 136 All right. Okay. Uh, narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri. May Allah be pleased with him. I heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, No salat, meaning prayer, is to be offered after the morning prayer until the sun rises, or after the afternoon prayer <coughs> until the sun sets. And in the narration of Muslim, there is no salat prayer after the Fajr morning prayer. Aqba ibn Namr narrated, There is no uh, narrated, there are three times at which Allah's Messenger وسلم, used to forbid us to pray uh, or bury our dead when the sun begins to rise till it's fully up, when the sun is at, at its height at midday till it passes the meridian, and when the sun draws near to setting till it sets. Okay, if you recall last time we talked about this hadith, we said that Sa'id al Khudri's hadith talks about two general times with a long span, time span between them. And Uqba ibn Amr talks about three specific times that are very short and not that long. And to sum things up, it's very easy to make them into three times. And that is, after Asr prayer, until the sun sets completely. We have here two times, after Asr prayer, until the sun begins to sit, and from the moment it begins to sit until it disappears completely. So these are two times. The last time, the, the, the latter one is, the latter period is extremely forbidden to be prayed in, because this is the time where the non-Muslims prostrate to it. Those who associate others with Allah, whether they're devil worshippers or whatever. So this is one time. The second time is when after a person prays Fajr until the sun rises. And just before it rises, this is one time, when it rise, begins to rise until it's completely risen, this is the second time and it's about five to ten minutes. So these are two times, actually there are four in two. And the last one, as in Uqba ibn Amr's hadith, when the sun is exactly in the middle of the sky, which is about five to ten minutes before the adhan. And when is the adhan called for dhuhr, Rushdi? It's not written. Pardon me? When does the adhan for dhuhr uh, uh, is called? When is it called? When the sun... Uh, exactly. Uh, when, the, when the sun... Uh, uh, sun uh, rise... Uh, when the shadow is... Uh, yes. Same with the... No. Nor? Uh, when, when the shadow is... Uh, uh, I say that. Little... To, to Meridian. Um, yes and no, Abu Malik. We would say like, when the sun is beginning to uh, turn to west, yes. in the middle point. Okay. When the sun starts to head towards the west and uh, the object begins to have a shadow. This is called Zawal. Dhuhr prayer is indicated by this short shadow. As you remember, when Fajr is called and sun rises, the shadow comes from the west towards the east and it decreases as the sun rises. And the minute the sun is in the middle of the sun, uh, in the middle of the sky, when the object has no shadow, it's forbidden for us to pray. Until it's called, uh, uh, the Dhuhr is called, Dhuhr prayer is called. And when does Dhuhr prayer, uh, uh, the time of Dhuhr prayer begins, is when the sun sets 
to the west a bit and the object begins to have uh, a shadow pointing eastwards. This is the time for Dhuhr prayer. So we have three times, if you look at it in a general way, or we have five times. These times it's forbidden for us to pray. The question is, Brother Mustafa, it's forbidden for us to pray all kinds of prayer? Voluntary prayers only. Voluntary prayers only. Because obligatory prayer, you can pray them any time of the day or night. There are no restrictions, none whatsoever, for you to uh, refrain from praying. Now, we come to these hadiths. Scholars have different opinions, as usual. Because some of them say, well, when it tells us not to pray, this is not because it's forbidden. No, because it's not recommended. But if you pray, then it's okay. Some scholars say this. Other scholars say, well, it's forbidden because the Prophet tells us not to do it. So some scholars say you do not pray any type of prayers at all. And this is one of, uh, uh, one of the schools that does this are the Hanafi school. Also, the Maliki school. And that is why if you see a person that follows the school of Malik, Ibn Anas, may Allah have mercy on him, you would find them coming before Maghrib prayer and sitting down immediately without praying anything, without offering anything. And also the followers of Abu Hanifa, they would do the same thing. So others say, no, you may pray. And if you look at it, you would find that you are stuck between a rock and a hard place because on one hand you have the Prophet saying والسلام, do not pray during these five times and on the other hand I come into the mosque after Asa prayer I'd like to sit down until it's Maghrib I would like to read Quran I want to sit down but I remember that the Prophet والسلام, said that whoever enters a mosque must not sit down until he prays to Raka'ah so what do I do? Again, we have a conflict uh, uh, that appears to be conflict in the, here between two hadiths. And if you recall, we have set four stages, four steps for us to follow whenever there is a dispute or a, di a conflict between two hadiths. One, we join. If we cannot, we look for a, a hadith or the one that obligated the other. Nasr. If we cannot, we try to uh, 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 determine which one is stronger or more authentic. If we cannot, we just wait until another scholar comes in and Allah Azza wa gave him knowledge. Zaki, you have a question? Yes, I, I have some a story that I got in my home. Someone pray uh, Asar prayer and then after praying, he pray again mm, to Rukat. And then after praying, I asked him, "What kind of praying you you do you you, you, do, you do after that after a moment?" He said to me, "I pray to rakaat to my brother who has de died." It is uh, it is uh, include to the uh, sunnah prayer or maybe. Well, what this gentleman did was wrong in two ways. One. Mm -hmm. He offered voluntary prayer after Asr, and this is not permissible. The Prophet Sallallahu said, it's forbidden. Two, he offered a prayer to, the de to a dead person. And scholars say that no one can offer prayer on behalf of a dead person. Of course, not even on behalf of, of a living person. Because prayer is an individual form of worship. It's different than paying charity, sadaqah. And it's different than performing Umrah or Hajj because you can do this. You can give your Hajj to someone else. So if I have a grandfather that is dead, I would say, okay, this year's Hajj for my grandfather. And before I set off for Hajj, I say, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ حَجًّا عَنْ my grandfather. This Hajj is for my grandfather. But prayer cannot be, uh, uh, trans uh, there is no transaction in prayer or you cannot draft a prayer and, and, and give it to someone else. This is not acceptable. So he did two mistakes, one and two. Mm -hmm. Coming back to our hadith, 
coming back to our dilemma, this guy who came into the mosque and does not know what to do, what do you guys think? Should he sit down without praying? And then he would have not followed the second hadith of the Prophet wasallam, Or should he pray and then he would have prayed in the time of Nahi, the time where he was not supposed to pray as mentioned in the five times. What do you, do, do you think? Mustafa. I think he should not pray. He should not pray because the Prophet says that these are times of Nahi. Yes. And should he sit down? Yes. Okay. Rushdi? I think I have the same opinion with Brother Mustafa. It's that better left the Salah because it's the, the time is for a bit, I mean. Okay. Abu Malik? Well, I assume he should pray because this, uh, the other hadith, you know, he's talking about certain prayers. This takes this prayer out of these ones, you know. Uh, how do you say it? So you're trying to join both hadiths instead of neglecting one exactly. of them. Brother Zaki? Yes, I think he, he, could, he could pray. He could or he should? He should pray. Pray. So we have two yees and two knees. Uh, okay, we have, we're looking for elbows now. Fadi? I think this is an exception. When he entered the mosque, he could not, he's not allowed to sit. Therefore, he should pray. And this is like a type of obligation to not pray. Not obligation, or type just like of a, an exception. Yeah, any, uh, uh, specializing a general thing. No? Exactly. I think he should pray. You, sh you think you should pray. What, what uh, school are you following? Shafi? Yes. Like, like all Indonesians, you are all Shafi school. And this is a, an issue of dispute among scholars. And each one has his own chunk of evidence, which is, authentic, which is considered to be authentic and correct. It depends how you look at it. And the first thing that we should put in mind is that always allow those who differ with you in opinion to have room of thinking. So it's not always that what I think is the ultimate and it's the best and what you think is wrong. There has to be common ground. I see it this way and I have the evidence that backs it up. You see it differently and you have the, the, the evidence that backs it up. We're all doing the right thing so there's no need for us to fight over it, especially in lots of things that differences among us is, is possible and probable. Uh, before going into details, I think we have a short break, so stay tuned. <laughs> program, inshallah, we'll be discussing the major sins in Islam, the way that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught us. Why the neighbor does not care about their neighbor anymore? Why does the father does not care about the son anymore? Why does the mother does not care about her daughter anymore? There's major sins that we need to be very far away in our lives so we could get and get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obtain the pleasure of Allah azza wa jalla. As long as we commit those major sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be too pleased from us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish those who commit those major sins. Keep away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden and you'll be the closest worshipper to Allah azza wa jal. It is our duty in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep away from what Allah azza wa had forbidden. As when we commit those sins, especially those major sins, remember you are displeasing your Lord and you are bringing upon the curse and the anger of your Lord upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Just before the break, we had an interesting survey regarding that if a person enters the masjid, the mosque, just after Asr prayer, and he has prayed Asr, and he would like to sit down and recite the Quran. So what would he do? Would he pray two rak'ah, the salute of the masjid, as it's called among scholars, tahiyyat al-masjid, so that he can sit? Or would he sit without praying? And in both cases, he would have done something that 
seems to be conflicting with the hadith or the other of the Prophet We have split decision here and thank God we don't have to refer to the golden goal and we will just move on and mention what the scholars said about this issue. One, Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah be pleased uh, uh, with him and have mercy on his soul, said that if you look at all the hadiths, see, this is the job of a faqih. This is the job of a scholar that works and deals with jurisprudence. He should look into all evidence, not on only to one. Because, because if you limit yourself to one, there are many others that have exceptions and exemptions and so on, and you would lose a lot. So, a Shafi says that after looking at all the evidence, we can say that it is prohibited for a Muslim to pray during these five times that we've mentioned before. After Asr, until the sun sets. After Fajr, until the sun rises. And during midday, when the sun is exactly in the middle of the sky. He says, but there are exceptions. With the exception of things that have a reason. So it is prohibited for us to pray if it's voluntarily uh, uh, general forms of prayer. What are you doing? Um, I don't have anything to do, so I'm just going to pray. No, sit down. It's forbidden. It's the time. Now it's forbidden for you to pray. And there's another different form of prayers, and, and that is the prayers that have a reason behind them. And he called it the watul asbab. The, re the, the prayers with a reason. For example, we prayed Asr. And just as we prayed Asr and we finished praying, they brought a funeral. And we have to pray the prayer of the funeral, of the dead. So one says, mm, Asr prayer. We can't pray until it sunsets. We cannot pray until sun, the sun sets. So what do you think? Leave the guy lying there for three, four hours and not pray? Or shall we pray? The answer is, we should pray. Then, well, how would we say that do not pray after Asr? This is exempted because this has a reason. This has a cause. Another example. You enter the mosque, you pray Asr prayer. And just as you finish Asr, there's an eclipse of the sun. I mean, I don't know if it's possible to have the sun uh, uh, eclipse after Asr, but you have to ask those that deal with the stars. Let's assume. So what do we do? We pray the prayer of eclipse. Why? Because it's just a time for it. It's being called for. And likewise, if I am going to engage, I'm, I'm going to propose to a woman after Asr prayer, the Sunnah is to make istikhara. Istikhara is a prayer with supplication requesting Allah Azza wa Jal to choose for you and to uh, 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 support you if it's good for you and to distract you away from it if it's bad for you. So I have to propose, I hope my wife is not watching again, I'm going to propose after Asr prayer. But I did not perform istikhara. And my meeting with them is at 5 o'clock. So should I go without making istikhara and then find myself in uh, real bad trouble because I didn't seek Allah's support? Or should I pray? Scholars say, go ahead and pray. Because this has a legitimate reason. It's not voluntary prayer. It's not something uh, preferred uh, prayer you're doing, you're just offering without any reason. And this is the choice of Ibn, uh, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, the choice of Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Thaymin, and all the authentic and strong scholars, knowledgeable scholars of Islam. They say that this way we combine all evidence together without neglecting this one or that one. It's all combined and it's all uh, 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 joined in one category. Brother Mustafa, you have a question. So that would exclude, for example, if I missed the Sunnah of Fajr. Can I pray it after Fajr directly or well, do I have to This wait? is different because 
there's a hadith that states it's okay. So we don't have to, you know, imagine things. There's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ finished one day, he finished Fajr prayer, and then saw one of his companions praying next to a pillar, praying two rak'ah. So he came and stood beside him and said angrily, while well, the guy was praying, is Fajr four rak'ah? Is Fajr four rak'ah? And he kept on repeating it. The guy finished prayer quickly and said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I, I ask Allah for forgiveness. I left my house without praying the sunnah. And I came into the masjid while you were praying in the congregation. So I joined you. And immediately after you finished, I came to pray the two rak'ah of sunnah that I was supposed to pray before. But I couldn't. I, I was late. So the Prophet ﷺ did not say a word. And this is one type of sunnah. There are four types of sunnah. Let's try and brainstorm it. The first type of sunnah. Who knows it? Saying by words. Words. If the, the Prophet says something, this is sunnah. The second type of sunnah. Action. By action. By action. So if the Prophet does something, this is sunnah because he did it. So we do it afterwards. Third statement. form of sunnah. Statement. Statement. Statement is was already mentioned. First type, which is words. Sunnah sukutiya. Character. If, if, he, if, he, if he refuses to, to answer. Approvals. Approval. So in this case here, the companion said something and the Prophet did not say anything, which meant that he approved, approved it. Otherwise, the Prophet would have said, no, don't do it again. So by not saying anything, this becomes a sunnah approval. And the fourth and last sunnah is the sunnah. Is what the Sahaba said something is from sunnah. Well, this is again either considered by deeds or approvals. Because, for example, hadith, Jabir ibn Abdullah kunna na'zil. We used to, well, I don't want to translate this. Uh, they used to do something at the time of the Prophet ﷺ while the Quran was revealed. And the Prophet did not deny them from doing it, so this is an approval. Mm -hmm. No, the fourth type of sunnah is the description of the Prophet ﷺ. So when one of the companions say that the Prophet was this high, he was this big, his eyes were this uh, a form, his fingers were this and, or that, he used to wear this and that, this is called uh, uh, sunnah, sunnah wasfiya, describing the Prophet ﷺ. Coming back again, you have to catch up with me because so many times I talk and I forget what brought me to this uh, 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 issue. So, remind me, what brought me to this issue? Uh, nevertheless, you, yes? We were talking about the, the times you were allowed to pray during al uh, al Okay, so this is the verdict of the scholars that you are allowed to pray in the times that you're not allowed to pray, depending that the prayer has a legitimate reason, a legitimate cause of it. One thing I'd like to point out for you is that the, the, the time may span and may be short. Now, it's forbidden for us to pray after Asr till no. the sun sets. Sun now, does this mean it's forbidden for me to pray from 5 o'clock until 8 o'clock, which is from Asr to Maghrib? No, it can be shortened. In the case, if a person did not pray Asr yet, so if a person prays Asr at 6 o'clock, though people have prayed and gone home, he can pray as long as he has not prayed Asr. I, I believe that this is understood. And again, if you reverse this, if a person is traveling and he preceded Asr prayer and prayed it Jama' Taqdeem with Dhuhr, so Dhuhr is called at 1 o'clock. He prayed 4 rak'ah of Dhuhr and he prayed 4 rak'ah of Asr. Or, because he's traveling, he prayed 2 and 2. So he prayed 2 rak'ah of Dhuhr, then he prayed 2 rak'ah of Asr. And the time is still 1 o'clock. And the call for Asr has not been called yet. So if the guy came to the mosque at 2 o'clock and said, well, let me pray Nafil. I just want to pray voluntary prayer. Is this allowed? It's 2 o'clock. The call for Asr has not been called yet. Yes. Is this allowed for him? In Trefoli? In Trefoli? No, no, he went into the mosque now. 
Now he prayed as Dohr and Asr, Churaka Churaka. And at two o'clock, he went to a mosque while he was traveling, and he thought that I might as well sit and rest for about half an hour and pray Sunnah, voluntary prayer for about half an hour, then continue to travel. Is it permissible for him to pray? Yes. Yes. Rushdie. Hmm? Rushdie? I think... Yes or no? Yes. Zeki? Yes, sir. Noor? Yes. Fadi? No. no. Mustafa? Well, we got four uh, uh, opposing four. two, and unfortunately, two leads the way. <laughs> he is not allowed to pray. Now, if you look again at the hadith we've studied, the Prophet says that it's forbidden for you to pray after Asr until the sun sets. You, as a traveler, traveler did you pray Asr? Yes. You prayed Asr, but you prayed it at 1 o'clock because you have the option to yeah. precede the prayer. So now it is for you forbidden to, be, to pray, voluntary prayer. Though the call for Asr has not been called, because for you individually, the Prophet tells you that it is not permissible for you to pray until the sun sets. So as I said, it is individual basis, it's quite can be quite uh, uh, long, on, and also on individual basis can be quite short depending if you did not pray Asr, you can do this. We have like uh, uh, 55 seconds. Okay, uh, what if someone for, for any reason forgot the Fajr prayer the, in the same case, forgot the Sunnah of the Fajr prayer? And the Prophet, he never left the uh, son of the Fred when he was traveling. And he came in this time between Dhuhr and Asr. Can he enter the mosque and pray the son of the Fred that he had left earlier before he left the country or the, the, his, his town? In this case, there is a hadith narrated by Umm Salama where the Prophet وسلم, used to pray two rak'ahs of Sunnah al Dhuhr after Asr. So she asked him, Now you said that we should not pray. How come you're praying? He said, well, I was engaged with some delegation that came f to visit me, and I could not make it. I could not make pray the sunnah, so he prayed it. So she asked, can we pray it? The Prophet said, no, you cannot. So this answers your question. You have to delay it afterwards. Uh, I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. I think there are a few issues here and there. We shall be able to continue it when we meet next time. Until then, fi amanillah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.